Welcome to the first edition of Investment Insights for 2024. Today, we have Guillaume Dihan with us. Welcome, Guillaume. Kia ora, Tatiana. Today, we will hear how the markets performed at the end of 2023. We'll delve into the current state of the bond market and examine China's economic recovery. Additionally, we'll analyze the dynamics of tech stocks and highlight key themes that investors should keep in mind for the year ahead. Guillaume, in the final quarter of 2023, markets seem to be recovering after a period of uncertainty. Can you please provide a brief overview of what was happening in the local and global markets during the last quarter? Equities saw a strong return after a poor start in October, with November providing the strongest set of monthly return in over three years. As the continued strength in US stock, mega cap was supported by positive return across the board. The S&P 500 finished up 11.7%, despite falling 2.1% in October, and the Nasdaq finished up 13.8%. Emerging market equities were up 5.6%, but fell short of developed market. China continues to be a drag on performance, as the much-talked-about post-COVID recovery continues to stutter. The US market received a leg up as investors reacted to the prospect of red cut in 2024. With market commentators pronouncing the rate hiking cycle to be at its end and rhetoric from the US Federal Reserve striking a dovish tone, market jumped at the first sign of easing in rates. As we've seen more than once in this cycle, Wall Street has been much more eager in its expectation for rate cuts, pricing in sharper and more prompt rate cuts than the communicated by the Fed officials. Could you please share the current status of the bond market and highlight any emerging trends or factors that might impact bond investments in the coming months. The expectation of imminent rate cuts also fed through into global bond market, with yields falling across the curve in response. The Bloomberg Global Aggregate Bond Index returned 5.7% over the quarter. The Fed opted to hold rates twice more, while both the European Central Bank and the Bank of England also kept rate flat. After the Fed December meeting, the market began to price in three cuts in 2024 instead of two. The US 10-year Treasury yield was down 80 basis points, while the UK 10-year gilt was down 90 basis points. Corporate bonds also fared well in November mini-boom, as soft landing scenario looks more likely. Closer to home uh, with the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, leaving interest rate untouched throughout the quarter, yields on New Zealand bonds fell. The yield on the New Zealand 10-year government bonds, which had reached its peak of 5.6%, ended the year at 4.3%. Before the Airbnb's November meeting, the general feeling was that the official cash rates would be cut in the second half of 2024. However, the accompanying announcements put an end to that, with forecasts indicating cuts to begin in mid-2025 and a potential for another hike before then. While rates may have peaked, um, they seemed unlikely to revert all the way back to the very low rates of the 2010s. This shift means the value of fixed income in multi-assets portfolio construction is clearly greater today. Uh, it would not be so wise, however, to assume that the defensive role of the fixed income will be as strong as in the last decade. There is no guarantee we will automatically return to a period of negative correlation between equity and bond. What role might China play in the markets in 2024 and what are the challenges it is currently facing? The post-COVID Chinese recovery has not gone as most observers expected. In weak economic growth and ongoing real estate stresses weighing on investor confidence, Chinese equities finished the quarter down to cap off an overall poor year. In response to the uh, slow growth, the Chinese government announced numerous stimulus measures to kickstart the economic growth, including a whitelist of approved property developer who are eligible to debt, loan and equity financing. Now, looking into 2024, we expect a recovery in Chinese retail sales as consumer confidence starts to grow while the country moved to an in-house advanced manufacturing should assist growth. Our view is uh, that China remains committed to doing whatever it takes in order to fulfill its 5% growth target going forward. 
we continue to recommend investors and base allocation to China and emerging market are at benchmark weight at least. Indeed, the negative sentiments may present a contrarian opportunity to the extent that the risks are already priced in. Are the Magnificent Seven likely to continue to dominate sentiment and returns like they did in 2023? Or are you expecting a broader view of equity markets to emerge? The dominance of the so-called Magnificent Seven in 2023 was driven by various factors, including strong financial performance, market position, and technological innovation. These companies have a significant impact on the equity market and have delivered impressive return for investors, but not only in 2023. Indeed, each of the seven stocks has easily outperformed the S&P 500 163% return in the past decade and have continued to do so in early 2024, driving market concentration to its highest level since 1972. It's important to note that the market dynamic can change over time. While these tech stocks have been influential in recent years, there is always the potential for new companies or sector to emerge and capture market attention. The equity markets are dynamic and can be influenced by a wide range of factors, including economic conditions, regulatory change, technological advancements, and investor sentiment. It's difficult to predict with certainty whether the dominance of the Magnificent Seven will continue or if a broader view of equity market will emerge. It's possible that the other sector or companies may gain prominence in the future, driven by new innovation or changing market dynamics. Diversification, risk management, and staying informed about market trends can be important strategies for investors to consider. As we are already a few months into 2024, are there any significant themes or trends that investors should keep in mind for this year? Cooling inflation across economies, interest rates cuts, possible China recovery and election in many countries. While interest rates are having an impact and cyclical inflationary pressure are subsiding, many significant structural inflationary pressure remain increasing protectionism, supply chain pressure, and the need of a long-term energy transition all skew inflation risk to the upside. Furthermore, the coordination of the fiscal and monetary efforts at the time of the pandemic could now devolve into a tension between a more restrictive monetary stance and a continued accommodative fiscal support for government eager to fund transition and win votes. The greatest deflationary force on the service of the upside equation is likely to be AI. 2023 was arguably the year of AI came of age, and those stocks deemed as AI enabler completely dominating global equity market return. The dynamic between these two opposing forces could result in a pattern for inflation that is near or at target for a reasonable length of time, only to be punctuated by stocks that filter through to slightly higher long-term average level. Higher rates today are once again highlighting the fragility of heavily indebted players in the market. It has shifted power from borrowers to lenders. In our view, private debt is very attractive in this environment, providing liquidity to economy in needs of it and offering investors strong risk-adjusted return. It is worthwhile keeping in mind that globally, this year, a record number of voters worldwide will participate in national elections, with at least 64 countries holding up polls. These elections, encompassing approximately 49% of the global populations, are expected to have far-reaching implications in the year ahead. The outcome of these national elections can have significant impact on financial market performance. Election often introduce a level of uncertainty, as they can result in change to government policies, regulation, and economic priorities. This uncertainty can influence the investor sentiment and market dynamics. Thank you, Guillaume. And thank you for watching this edition of Investment Insights.